With so much content whizzing around out there, there's only one storytelling platform that helps you keep calm and stay informed and inspired. Flipboard. Flipboard curates the world's stories so you can be smarter in your work, life, and play. Choose from thousands of topics to personalize Flipboard and get the latest stories from the best publishers and experts delivered to you 24-7. When you see stories you want to save or share, tap the plus button to add them to private or public collections. It's that simple. Used by millions of people every day, Flipboard is how people move themselves and the world forward. Get started now at Flipboard.com. It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your hosts, Bart Moraz and John Suter. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. It's E-Commerce Minute, episode 293. In today's episode, Office Depot opens in-store co-working space. Office Depot has announced it's piloting its first ever co-working space. It's called the Workonomy Hub, and it's integrated into the Los Gatos, California store. The space will offer the company's current suite of products and services, along with workspace for small business owners and remote workers. The co-working space is part of the company's expanded Workonomy platform that goes beyond office supplies to offer business services for small to medium-sized businesses. Office Depot lags behind competitor Staples in the co-working arena. Staples partnered with the workspace startup WorkBar in 2016 to offer co-working spaces at three of its Massachusetts locations. Staples space requires a $130 a month membership to access, while Office Depot charges $40 for daily use to $750 a month for a private office. While it's certainly no WeWork, it's a better alternative than working out of a coffee shop or in the front seat of your car. Office Depot is also offering, by the end of August, new tech service kiosks that will provide direct on-demand access to Office Depot's technology experts in 141 stores across Florida, Texas, and Georgia. Self-service printing and copying kiosks will be in more than 1,000 stores in the same period. As the so-called retail apocalypse continues, innovative retailers like Office Depot will need to come up with creative solutions to keep the foot traffic coming and keep the lights on. Co-working in an office supply store. Paging well, Dwight Schrute. <laughs> when is Dunder Mifflin going to make one? <laughs> that would have been better. <laughs> I guess if you ran out of paper, you can just go pick it up. It's right there. Well, that's the plus side of it. Now, there are some photos, and I will have the photos posted on our website have you seen the photos bart no all right so uh these would look really that's like that's like going to like a fedex office and like working out of it from the picture yeah that i think that's (laughs) the common area there's another photo which i'll have on the website uh it looks like they took the back of the store and just kind of did a we work style just glass booths they're the private offices there's some pros and cons for both the worker and office depot itself office depot obviously maximizing more of their uh square footage uh for the worker <laughs> as you said <laughs> never run out of pencils or paper <laughs> i don't know uh so i get it uh obviously it's it's trying to maximize your space and you know how many times you know why would you need you know uh office supply stores anymore or that stuff is going away, right? It's a lot more digital. Although every time I talk to people who work in offices, they're like, yeah, we still print so much paper. And I'm like, why? Yeah, I it's funny. Be- they've, they've predicted the demise of paper for so long, but I think people use even more paper. I still have a printer in my office. I print things out. Um, I've noticed, though, that I do make the occasional trip to the Office Depot or Staples for pens or whatnot. What yeah, I've noticed basis, is... Right? What I've noticed is you still go the outer ring of the store. So this time of year, obviously school supplies, they've got that all figured out. They've got the Mm -hmm. counters, the, you know, the crappy briefcases, the chairs, the center of it always seems to be more merchandised than anything. Like they're trying to figure out what to do with the rest of that store. So they're trying to sell phones, they're trying to sell printers, they're trying to sell other technology. I think this is a great use because it's more of a I think a more reliable cash flow. Now let's talk about the, the the cost of this. Can you do a drop in at WeWork for a day? Yes. And what would of. that be? Um, so kind of. I think that WeWork, the smallest membership you can get is forty dollars. Okay, month. so forty is competitive because I've seen there's ones in Florida that are twenty for a drop in. I don't know. If, you can do it. Yeah, I think there's you get a day or something like that. I don't remember what their pricing looks like anymore. Okay, so forty is competitive. And how about for the private office? Do you think seven fifty is is a good price? Uh, well, that's about what we work charges. Okay, so they're they're being competitive price wise. 
I don't think they're being really competitive at all. Well, I don't think atmosphere wise, not at all. No. So, I mean, if they want to succeed, I would drop the price. I mean, they, they already pay for the space, right? And in reality, co working is not really about the real state of, that, of itself, right? It's the environment and what you can do with it. Right. I mean, if you look at what WeWork offers, even just for a $40 drop in, you've got, I mean, I don't even know if you can get a glass of water at the Office Depot. <laughs> Just the benefits of where we work, and we've talked about this, uh, you know, many times. But I think that would be an important thing. Now, let's take and turn it. You're you're a road warrior, and you just need a place to get some stuff done. I think this is great for a drop in. I think forty is a bit high given what the environment is. I'd be I'd be interested to see if they drop that or adjust that, considering your alternatives are a coffee shop or if you go to a WeWork, which has way more way more perks than just sitting in the back of an office supply store. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you, you stop at Starbucks and it costs you $3. Yeah, no, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you so, know, so I mean, <laughs> and the Wi-Fi is usually better too. <laughs> <laughs> Ask a client to come see you at office depot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's another thing. It's like, come meet me in my co-working space in the back of this office depot. Like you look at some of the Regis places, like if you're a bigger company, you're not going to, you're not going to be co-working out of an office depot. Yeah. So I think this is good for salesmen, road warriors, people that really don't need to see clients just need to, you know, and I think this is going to fit into a niche in a suburban. Yes. So really great example. I live near the suburbs and there's really no co-working up here. They tried a few and they didn't really catch on. I think this will be good for if you pop this in a suburban mall, because if you look at the statistics, 43% of American employed Americans do some kind of uh, working at home or co-working or flexible working environments. Mm -hmm. So you pop this into a shopping mall. I think you've got a winner. So great example. If you go up on, Street Road, you know where Street Road is around here. There's a big office depot. There's there's no co-working around here. There's no place to go and just get out of your house except for, like we said, a coffee shop. So this might work. Uh, yeah, I think for people who travel, like don't want to hang out in the hotel, they want to go work a little bit for wherever they are. It's not a bad idea. Yes, but we're spoiled. We're we work guys, so we. <laughs> All right, pretty interesting. We'll see how this catches on. See if they uh, adjust the pricing. And as I said, we'll have photos on our website, ecommerceminute.co. Do you have anything to add, Bart? No, that's it, sir. All right, that's your e-commerce minute for today. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe, or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e-commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e-commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy. <laughs>